and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the National 5 topic, Energy from Fuels. Use the link in the description box to go to my website to download the accompanying worksheet for this lesson. First, let's look at some definitions you need to know for this topic. Exothermic refers to a reaction or process which gives out heat energy. Endothermic refers to a reaction or process which takes in heat energy. Combustion is when a substance reacts with oxygen and releases heat energy. Let's have a look at combustion. The fuels that we focus on in National 5 Chemistry are the alkanes and alcohols. During complete combustion, which is where you have a plentiful supply of oxygen, they will both produce water and carbon dioxide. During incomplete combustion, which is where there is a limited supply of oxygen, they both produce carbon in the form of soot and carbon monoxide. You need to be able to complete combustion equations, so you have to be able to balance these. To balance these, you need to make sure that you remember three things. First of all, there should only be one mole of fuel. Secondly, balance in alphabetical order. So you need to balance in the order carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And thirdly, you can use half in the balancing if you need to. This is often required when balancing the oxygen. So first, let's look at this example. Methane plus oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water. So methane is CH4, oxygen is diatomic, O2. We have carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. Remember, you can only put numbers in front of the formulae. We're going to keep the fuel as CH4, just one mole. So now we need to count up what we have. So with carbons, we have one on the left and one on the right. With hydrogen, we have four on the left, two on the right, and oxygen, we have two on the left and three on the right. So we start with carbon, we're gonna leave that as one. If we move to hydrogen, we have four on the left and we've only got two on the right. So we're gonna put a two in front of the water that means that we've now got four hydrogens, but we've added in another oxygen, so we also have four oxygens. So to balance the oxygen, we need to put in a two in front of the O2, and now we're balanced. Let's try another couple of examples. So here we have ethane plus oxygen. So we've got C2H6 plus O2 to give CO2 plus H2O. If we count up the three elements that we have, we have two carbons on the left and one on the right. We have six hydrogens on the left, two on the right, two oxygens on the left and three on the right. If we balance the carbon first, we need to put a two in front of the CO2 and that will balance our carbon, but we've also added in another two oxygens. So now we have five oxygen on the right. If we balance the hydrogen next, we need to put a three in front of the water, that gives you the six hydrogens that you require. However, now we've added in another two oxygens. So instead of having five, we now have seven. To balance the oxygen, we now need to have seven divided by two, which is three and a half. So we can put in three and a half O2. In this next example, we have ethanol plus oxygen. So we have C2, H5OH plus O2 to give CO2 and H2O. On the left we have two carbons, on the right we have one. On the left we have six hydrogens and on the right we have two. On the left we have three oxygens and on the right we have three. Let's balance the carbons first by putting a two in front of the CO2. This also gives us two more oxygen, so we have five oxygen on the right. 
If we now balance the hydrogens, we're going to put a 3 in front of the water. That gives us 6 hydrogens, but we've also got an extra 2 oxygen, so we now have 7. When we want to balance the oxygen now, we need to take into account that we have this single oxygen here. So whilst we currently have 3 on the left hand side, if we remove 1 from this side, because it's on its own, that would take us down to 2, and it's much easier to deal with in pairs. So whatever we do to the left, we're going to do to the right. So if we imagine we get rid of one from the left hand side and we get rid of one from the right, we're now dealing with have, having two and six, which is easier. So if we have six and it comes in pairs, we need to have three. So if we've got three times two, we have six here, plus the extra one is seven, which is the same as what we have on the right hand side. Pause the video now and try these examples. In this first example, we have propane plus oxygen to give carbon dioxide plus water. So for this, you need C3H8 plus five oxygens to give three carbon dioxide and four water. For butanol, you have C4H9OH plus six O2 to give four CO2 plus five H2O. For hexane, we have C6, H14, plus 9.5 O2 to give 6 CO2 plus 7 H2O. And finally, for pentanol, we have C5, H11 OH, plus 7.5 O2 to give 5 CO2 and 6 H2O. You need to be able to know how to determine the energy released by fuels. This is the standard setup of equipment that you would use when doing this. So let's label what we have. So you have a thermometer. Make sure your thermometer is not touching the metal cup that you have here. Okay, so we'll have some sort of metal beaker. Metal is used rather than glass because it conducts uh, heat better. So a known volume of water. Here we have a draft shield. This helps to stop uh, heat from escaping and a spirit burner of alcohol usually. You can have any fuel, but this is normally what you would do in class where you would have a spirit burner. You would heat up your known volume of water and then you'd have the start temperature and end temperature and it'll allow you to calculate the energy released on burning the fuel. So we've got this equation here that we use. So we have your energy and this is in kilojoules. C is specific heat capacity. Now usually we're dealing with water, so we're heating up water, all three of these things here are to do with the water. For water, that is 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram per degree C. This number is in your data book. You then have mass, and this is going to be of water or whatever you happen to be heating up, and that is in kilograms. And then you have your change in temperature. And that's going to be in degree C, and that's going to be end minus start temperature. You need to be able to calculate any of the four things that we have here. So let's have a look at some examples. Calculate the heat energy released when 0 0.7 grams of petrol is burnt to raise the temperature of 50 mils of water from 9.4 degrees C to 49.9 degrees C. Now, this often has a mass in the question. This is a bit of a red herring to see if you are going to cor correctly pick out what mass to use. You're not using the mass of the fuel, you're using the mass of the water that you're heating up, so ignore the 0 0.7. So we're gonna put a little line through that. Okay, we are trying to find the heat energy. We've got 50 mils of water. We have the temperature at the start and the temperature at the end, and because we have water, we can work out the specific heat capacity. So we're gonna have E equals Cm delta T, so C is going to be 4.18, M 
is 50 mils, but we need this in uh, kilograms. So we're going to divide by a thousand because one milliliter is the same as one gram. So we'll have 0 0.05 kilograms. And then delta T, you take the end temperature, 49.9 .9, minus the start temperature, 19.4. And that will give you a temperature rise of 30.5 degrees C. We then just put the numbers into the equation and into your calculator. Remember to take a calculator to your exam. And that will give you a value of 6.37 kilojoules. Let's try this question here. Ethanol was used to heat 250 grams of water. The energy change was 28.5 kilojoules. The initial temperature of the water was 24.4. Calculate the final temperature. So here we need to rearrange our equation. So start with the regular equation. So we have E equals CM delta T. If we're trying to find the final temperature of the water, we need to find what the temperature rise was. So we are looking for delta T, which is going to be equal to E divided by C multiplied by M. So our C is 4.18 because we're dealing with water. Our M is 250 divided by 1,000, so it's in kilograms, so 0.25. And then we have E in the question, which was 28.5 kilojoules. So we're going to put these numbers in. So we'll have 28.5 divided by 0 0.25 times 4.18. So delta T is going to be equal to 27.27. Now we've got the start temperature. We want the final temperature. So the final temperature is going to be the start temperature, which was 24.4, plus the temperature rise, 27.27. So that's going to give us a final temperature of 51.7 degrees C. A question like that is probably going to be worth one more mark than the others. Pause the video now and try these questions. So in the first question, propan 1 was burned to raise the temperature of 100 mils of water from 18 degrees C to 23.2. Calculate the energy released. So we're using E equals CM delta t. We're dealing with water, so c is 4.18. The mass is going to be the 100 mils divided by 1000, get into kilograms, and delta t is going to be end temperature 23.2 minus the start temperature 18 to give you a temperature rise of 5.2. Then put the numbers in, 4.18 times 0 0.1 times 5.2. So your energy will be 2.17 kilojoules. So here we have 1.1 kilojoules of energy was released when 0 0.15 grams of fuel was burned. So that's another wee red heading one. So we're just going to score that out. This heated 30 grams of a liquid. So we don't know what liquid from 12 degrees to 27 degrees. Calculate the specific heat capacity. So first of all, we'll rearrange the equation. So we've got E equals CM delta T. We're trying to find C. So C is going to be E divided by mass times delta T. And make sure that you do that part first. So energy in the question, we've got 1.1. Mass in the question, we have 30 grams. We need to divide that by 1,000. So we'll have 0 0.03. And then your delta T it be end temperature 27 minus the start temperature 12, so that'll be 15. So we can put these numbers in. So we're going to have 1.1 divided by 0 0.03 times 15. Do that on your calculator first. So C is 1.1 divided by 0 0.45. So C is 2.44, and the units for C are always kilojoules per kilogram, per degree C. And the last question we have here, 149 kilojoules of energy was used to heat 1,200 grams of olive oil. The specific heat capacity of olive oil is 1.97 kilojoules per kilogram per degree C. 
calculate the final temperature if the initial temperature was 15 degrees. So here we've got E equals Cm delta T. We're trying to find the final temperature, which means we're trying to get the delta T. So we'll have energy divided by C multiplied by M. Energy in the question is given as 149 kilojoules. The mass is 1200 divided by 1000 because we need to have this in kilograms. And then C is also given in the question because it's not water, it's olive oil, as 1.97. So delta T is 149 divided by 1.97 times 1.2. So that's 2.364. Temperature rise is then 63. We want the final temperature. Start temperature was 15. Temperature rise was 63. So overall, your final temperature would be 78 degrees C. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on X at Miss Adams Chem, Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry and TikTok Miss Adams Chem for updates on new videos, flashcards and short videos throughout the year. Bye for now.